No, I, I'm not. I'm not getting across clearly. What I'm trying to say is that it's it, there's no longer um, there's no longer validity to individual mental illness. The construct of individual mental illness is dead, and it's dead because the world is mentally ill. What I'm trying to say is that in a deranged world, a world that is sick in the head, mental illness of the individual is positively reinforced. In other words, the environment no longer provides you with cues, health cues, cues on how to be healthy. You're no longer taught, you're no longer, you're no longer brought up to be healthy. There's no unscripted exposure therapy. You're no longer exposed to healthy alternatives. If you are mentally ill in a mentally ill world, the world is going to reward you it, 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 to be mentally ill. It, it, it would pay. It would pay to be mentally ill. You know, if you were, if you were living in, in Nazi Germany in the 1930s, it paid to be mentally ill. It was a positive adaptation. If you were a psychopath or a narcissist in the Third Reich, in Hitler's kingdom, then, you know, you rose to the top. And it's the same today. The world is mentally ill. So individuals cannot be mentally ill. That's the new normal. The new normal is to be mentally ill. And you can't look around, around you at other people at collectives, at institutions, at countries, at authorities, at scientists, at experts, at gurus, at public intellectuals. You can't look at your family and your parents and your siblings and your friends and your sex partners and your intimate partners. No one. No one is mentally healthy. So you can't look around you and say, well, I'm going to calibrate my behavior. I'm going to control my impulses. I'm going to be healthier. I'm not going to act out. I'm not going to be defiant. I'm not going to be reckless. I'm not going to be crazy. Because I have these ex ex examples of, of people who are healthy. And if I do behave in a mentally ill way, you know, the world is going to push back and I'm going to pay a price. And I don't want to do that. You don't have this anymore. If you believe be, behave in a mentally ill way, you're going to be rich. You're going to be powerful. You're going to be successful. You're going to be a, a famous and a celebrity. Mental illness is the precondition, the main qualification in the job interview. So the environment can be of help to you. People around you can be of help to you. And in such a dystopian bedlam, the whole world is a, is a crazy mental asylum. So in such a dystopian bedlam, narcissism, for example, is a value, you know, the more narcissistic you are, the more admired you are, because you have ambition, you have a drive, you trample over people, you, you get things done, you are you a go-getter, you are daring do, you are, you are not a loser, you are a winner. Narcissism becomes a value. Self-harming, self-harming with sex, self-harming with substances is now empowering fun. If you self-harm with sex, you're an empowered woman. If you do substances like alcohol or drugs, you're having fun. These things are normalized. They become normative. And magical thinking, you know, if I only put my mind to it, the universe will accommodate my wishes. <laughs> this kind of nonsense. Magical thinking, or I believe in God, another idiocy. These are the only touted strategies. What else do you have? I mean, the world is, is crazy. The world is unpredictable, capricious, arbitrary, insane. There's no point to use reasoning or rationality. No one is rational. No one is reasoned. There's emotional reasoning. So you better be emotional. You better believe in magic because science is indistinguishable from magic right now. And science encourages in you magical thinking, especially technologies, various technologies encourage. I mean, there's the metaverse coming in the metaverse. You are the great wizard in the metaverse. You create the world, you create the universe. 
And you're God. We have we have become God. We are gods. Narcissism is a new religion because it renders each and every one of us a, a god and a worshipper. And so we each and every one of us is a one man or one woman religion. And the contemporary wars between the genders, because there's a war, don't kid yourself. There's a war, it's a life and death war. Either men will finish off women or women will finish off men. That's the way it's going. It's not going to stop and it's getting worse by the day. And women are our enemies as men. End of story. And men are the avowed enemies of women. Also end of story. It's out in the open finally. We've had this war going for 10,000 years. And men were winning. And then now men are losing. And men are not going to take it lying down. And women are not going to take it lying down. And there's going to be a war. There is a war. What am I talking about? But this war is a private case of this mass insanity. Look what's happening. The locus of intimacy has shifted. Intimacy is no longer associated with sex. Intimacy today is associated with talking to each other or with light touching, hand holding, touching your hair. That's intimacy. Sex is not intimacy. Uh, today, avoiding sex, postponing sex, these are now the signals of being serious about a partner. If you find someone likable or lovable, you don't have sex with them <laughs> because sex is the opposite of intimacy. Sex, you have sex with people you don't like, people you will not get attached to, strangers. You don't have sex with people you like and could get attached to because it will end in, end in heartbreak. And everyone is risk averse. Everyone is co cotton candy. Everyone is, you know, no, don't touch me. No, I don't want that. It's risky. Wow, horrible. This, that. This is narcissism as well, of course, because you're cosmically significant. And so you should never compromise your, your uh, body or your mind and should never expose yourself to triggers and risks and, and so on. So sex is dangerous because it can lead to attachment. You can catch feelings. It can lead to, to, to an affair. It could lead, God forbid, to a committed relationship or horrible marriage and children. This is the path to damnation. So sex and intimacy are a no-go zone. It's Chernobyl. Chernobyl. It's like a post-apocalyptic nuclear catastrophe area. Like no one wants to have relationships. No one, let alone marriage and children. So um, today, if you find someone you like or you love, first thing you do is not have sex. You keep sober. You don't drink. And you enter a committed relationship, which most of which end up being sexless. Men and women hate each other. They hate each other. And that's true. But you know what? Even this is a private case. Because everyone hates everybody else. Hatred is the coinage of the realm. It's the new, new, hatred is the new love. Hatred is the new normal. You relate to other people by hating them. And then gradually, maybe you grow to love them. So it's like guilty until proven innocent. So you hate. You just hate. It's reflexive. Everybody hates everybody. So of course men hate women. Ideology trumps science. I mean, F science. I mean, I have my own ideology, my own truth, my own facts. Facts are opinions. Opinions have become facts. Emotions become certainties. Power is the holy grail, not love. Love is for the mushy cushy. Love is for tree huggers and touchy feely, effeminate men or, you know, um, stupid gullible women. I mean, love is out of fashion completely. Love sucks. And victimhood supplants dignity. We had a culture of dignity. Throughout human history, we had a culture of dignity, reputation and dignity, define who you were as a human being. Today, it's identity politics. You are defined by your brand of victimhood. Everybody, everyone and his dog is a victim of someone or something. Everyone. There's not a single person I know who is not a victim of something or someone somewhere at some time now or in the future. That's it. Victimhood is in the air, like love used to be. 
So now, there's no dignity, there's no reputation, there's no striving, there's no work, there's no investment, there's no commitment, there's no energy left. Everyone is in a, in a lethargic state of learned helplessness. Self-centeredness, you asked me about, about egotism and so on, it's very often confused, egotism, narcissism. So narcissism is a clinical entity, it's a, forget that. Don't even use this word, it's overused, it's wrong, wrongly used, I mean, it's a disaster zone. But self-centeredness, self-centeredness is totally uprooted communality. We don't do things together anymore because we're technologically self-sufficient and we are atomized. We don't see people except occasionally on a dating app when we want to dis discharge fluids. We have become each other's sex dolls, dildos, animated dildos. We had been objectified to the core. We are each other's total objects, but I mean objects not in the psychological sense. Objects as in refrigerator or television or car or smartphone. We are using each other's bodies, not very interested in each other's minds anymore. No one, no one really reads, no one is curious, no one is, is going on the adventures of the mind, the adventures of the, of the body count. And there's this endless stream of mind-numbing entertainment. And so people you know, switch on Netflix or play video games hours a day, according to recent studies. So there's no communality. How can, you be, how can you have a community? How can you collaborate and work together and produce together if you don't talk to each other, if you're stuck at home? Social isolation and distancing had long preceded COVID. They are, they, they are a 40-year-old trend. They've been described in books in the 1980s. Aggressive and even violent tribalism and partisanship are ripping us asunder because we no longer communicate with each other. We're not interested. We want to be in echo chambers with like-minded people surrounded by confirmation bias. We don't want to talk anymore. Okay, you see, but there's universities. They are centers of thinking and deliberation and debate and study and research. Bullshit. Bullshit. Higher education teaches nothing useful. Nothing useful. I'm not talking about engineering, STEM. I'm not talking about science, technology, engineering. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about humanities and so on. Which is the vast majority of universities. I mean, a very tiny percentage are in, in science or technology studies. An overwhelming majority of students are in humanities. Humanities are crap. They're a crock of shit. They're nothing. They teach you nothing useful. Humanities inculcate in the tender charges of academe, the students, inculcating them self-harming behaviors, infantilism, aversion, avoidance, withdrawal, anxiety, and fear of life. That's what higher education does for you. And in addition to that, you go into student debt to pay for this nonsensical trash and hype. So no wonder higher education is declining. There's no tenure. There are no tenured professors. Everyone is terrified of each other. The whole thing is falling apart because it provides no value. The students have taken over in a replay of Mao's cultural revolution and faculty are terrified. The censorship, political correctness, trigger warnings, you name it. It's impossible to do proper research, to write anything, to say anything. You might end up um, in a committee. You, uh, talking to a student is sexual harassment. It's insane what's going on there. Higher education is doomed. It's dead in the water. It's, it's taken seven, eight hundred years since the University of Paris. The 21st century will see the abolition of higher education. I have no doubt about this. The university is a dead institution. It's at best a place to have fun and hookups in drunken parties. That's the main function of universities nowadays. In such a toxic, toxic cesspool writ large. This world, postmodern world we live in, certain mental health proclivities, central, certain mental health disorders are advantages. They are positive adaptations. They are something to aspire to. Uh, derangements like narcissism and psychopathy 
owning a dark triad personality is the road to, to health, a road to success and prominence. So these are positive adaptations. They're scholars who glamorize narcissism and psychopathy because it sells. Money corrupted, corrupted everyone. YouTube is an abomination, absolute abomination. If anyone had, had balls, they would ban all these social media and dismantle them. The worst thing that had happened to humanity. The worst thing that had happened to humanity, malicious factories, malicious factories designed with malice aforethought to destroy the minds of human beings via processes of conditioning, addiction and worse, relative positioning and worse. And so narcissism and psychopathy are thriving. Dark personality, dark triad personalities are at the top. They manage the world, they run the world. And they run the world because the world is sick. The sick rise to the top when the world is sick. And there's nothing we can do about this. Even the healthy ones, I'm not among them, but the healthy ones. There's nothing you can do about this. These are the forces of history. This is how civilizations end and new ones begin. But the new civilization at our doorstep is not the Middle Ages. Middle Ages was harmless fun compared to what we are entering now. Because now we have technology. And now we don't have, we don't have institutions, societal institution, institutions and communal institutions. The Middle Ages had, 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 the concept, had the institution of family. They had the institution of the church. The Middle Ages had institutions to buffer against, to buffer against the collapse of civilization. We don't have anything, anything, except our technologies which make, which accelerate these pernicious trends. We are bloody doomed, doomed completely.